Hello. Rocks Vegas. Traffic cores. Mm. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. It's another team profile and projection. An episode a day, every day until opening day. We got the Colorado Rockies. The Colorado Rockies, Jake's Rocks, formerly Jake's Rocks, now Kelsey's Rocks. This, much like the Nationals, Jake, is a team I have not heard or thought about all offseason. Yeah. Just have not been on the radar. I can't, I'm trying to scrape to see, did they make any moves? Yeah. Is there things I should remember? I have no coat. Yeah, Kotak. Okay, that's one. But what does the public need to know? Did this team do anything? And these TPPs are brought to you by SeatGeek, code TALKING, $20 off your first order. With SeatGeek, James, who's coming in to the formerly 68 and 94 Rocks last year? Oh, they missed the postseason. Uh, Pierce Johnson, he'll stabilize that bullpen. Uh, And then, yeah, man, they had a couple smaller trades. Connor Siebold, who I think might get some run in the rotation. Nolan Jones, who was, you know... uh, Guardians prospect that was well respected, maybe a change of scenery for him. Otherwise, Brent Suter came over from the Brew. Nick means, I bet he means well. Uh, otherwise, some minor league contracts. Who they lost? Carlos Emilio Estevez actually had a kind of nice year. He's with the Halos now. Connor Joe, everyone's favorite, so he's out of town. Who? Big old, big old Sam Hilliard. Connor Joe. Uh, Jose Iglesias remains unsigned, along with Chad Cool, Colome. And Hulis Chassin, as we record this. Garrett Hampson, also gone. Scott Oberg, retired. Mm. Good job, Scott. Oh, my God. Trev, there's one thing that always happens in Colorado. We're hitting balls, baby. Where's that line the up offense, at? The offense wasn't too bad last year. Sixth in average, 12th in OPS. Uh, we're going to start out with Jonathan Diaz out there in center field. Chris Bryant, remember him? An absolute stud looking for a bounce back year out of him. Uh, Ryan McMahon at third base. CJ Crone hit some absolute bombs last year. Charlie Blackman, will this be his last year in Colorado? Brendan Rogers, that fuck Randall Grichik will be out there. Elias Diaz and Ezekiel Tovar. Uh, he's a switch hitter. He'll be at shortstop on the bench. Sean Bouchard, I like that name. Harold Castro, this one's tough. El Reese Montero. I messed that up. I tried my best, and Brian Servin might be the backup catcher there. So there is some proven hitters in that Colorado lineup. Uh, Like I said, offense wasn't great last year, but also probably wasn't the problem. James, tell me about that rotation. German Marquez. Mm. Mm. He's been around for a while. Remember they let him die that one year? Like he had like 18 earned runs and it just tanked his whole, all of his numbers in his season. So that was weird. Kyle Freeland, Jose Urania. He had a good start to the year. Kind of a crazy guy. Austin Gomer. Mm, oh, shit. This is an all timer. This is a I'm calling him Gomber. Gomer. People get mad about that one. Yeah, this one. Connor Seabald. Ah. <laughs> Peter Lambert, Noah Davis. Hey, we've got a friend in the bullpen. Yeah, Daniel Bard's a friend of the program. Mm. Pierce Johnson uh, loves thinking about beating up Jake, Brent Suter. Jake Bird, that's rough name. Damn, that's, that's the coolest rough name I've seen yet. Like, on surface, you could be like, Jake Bird, that's a cool name. But then you think about Jake's and how bad they suck, and you think about Bird's, how they're just a bunch of sky garbage. Jake Bird, that's a tough, cool name. Sounds cool. You look a little like magnifying glass, just a pile of dog shit. And you don't like that name. No. I do like it, but sucks. So that's the Rockies. I didn't didn't get blown away by anything we've said. I don't know how... I don't know. Jake, what's your optimistic spin here? They are, and they were my rocks. Uh, Your biggest optimistic spin is... The guy who's supposed to be the best player on this team, Chris Bryant, came over. Big boy contract after not locking up Story, after locking up Arenado, then trading him and eating some of the cash. They lock up Chris Bryant. He only plays 42 games last year. So, 
And in those games, he actually, 306, 376, 851. So if we could get 130 out of Chris Bryant, you know, we almost just added 100 games of a high-level ball player. So you, you got to like that. Um, CJ Crone, you kind of have to respect what he's now done the past couple seasons. Ryan McMahon has, has been very good at third base defensively and providing a left-handed bat. So you talk yourself into the top half of this lineup, even... You know, Brendan Rodgers, who was, uh, you know, formerly kind of a big-time prospect for them, he it never fully clicked, uh, but then he, he puts it together a little bit last year. He's a little under a league average hitter, but he plays a full season. He was 25 years old, so if he can take a tick up, now you're talking about a top half of the lineup that you like for the Rockies. And like like Trev said, if uh, this rotation... If this was on another team, Marquez and Freeland, like if they pitched in a pitcher's ballpark, you know, we'd be talking about ERAs probably projected 3-5-3-8. Instead, we play in Colorado and you're hoping to be under five. So it's kind of the the push and pull that comes with Kelsey's rocks. Um, the part that's tough, it, it feels like in that division, there's just no ceiling. Like you can only do so much with those powerhouse teams. And there's not, not a lot of there's not a lot of help on the way as far as prospects that are really ready to help out this year. They have yeah. some. They have three in the top 100 as I'm looking at the page right now. Uh, Tovar, like I mentioned, he's a 47th overall. He'll be a part of their plans. Zach Veen, uh, probably a little bit down the road there. There's really no sugarcoating it. And the Rockies, y- you mentioned it, James. I I don't know how high the the ceiling is there. You can you could talk about how good they've played at home over the last couple of years. They were uh, over 500 at home, not very good on the road last year. In, two, in 2021, they were even better at home. So maybe they get some more of that home cooking. Um, but I think, and I don't know if this is just me having a bad taste in my mouth about story about Arenado. Like, I I I I don't think they should be ranked this high. I think our fans may or, or may not have kind of messed this one up. Yeah. I think they might have forgotten 23rd, the Rockies were there. And then, high. oh, yeah, here we go. I agree. I was like, I, I thought they would be lower. They haven't had a winning record above, like, in the 400s at home or on the road this, since 2018, I think, uh, not counting COVID year, where they didn't have to travel that much. Jake, you also talk about, in a lot of these episodes, we've talked about the the balanced schedule, and, and they're yeah. in a division that has some juggernauts, the West. They went 33 and 43 versus the West last year, so you're going to take that's 10 games uh, under, however you want to say that, 500. So you're going to lose some of those, but you're gaining games against the East and the AL East. They were really bad against the East. They but hate the East. against the Central... 16 and 16. Hey, baby. Oh. I'm a central elitist. Yes. Okay, you guys need to relax a little bit. I do want to apologize. I Where called, do you live? Uh, I called Yonatan, Yonatan Diaz. It's actually Yonatan Daza, and that's Thank you. my fault. Okay. And I do live on the West Coast. Right. I lived in Illinois for a little bit. Oh. I lived in Denver with these Rockies. Yeah, I, I guess the... The other thing that's funny, because we talk about ranking the teams, and I, I don't, you know, I think, you know, when our when our good people rank them, you just do wins and losses. And I mean, the Rockies, I remember last year we started laughing when we did their TPP because they won 74 games the year before, and they signed Chris Bryant. So it's kind of like, all right, it, uh, all right, Rockies. They didn't. Have, they only had one winning month last year. They won six. April. Sixty-eight yeah. games, and like you mentioned, with the <laughs> they're always going to be a little bit worse on the road than they should be, and they're always going to be a little bit better at home than they should be. So I I think in a way, win loss wise, uh, it it balances out. If not, maybe maybe ticks them up a little bit. That it <laughs> it sounds rude to say, but in a way, this doesn't feel like a sixty-eight win team. Um, but hey, Chris Bryant. Go ball out, get some efforts from the from your pitching staff, and play more central, and maybe you can rack up some wins. But it, it feels like this team has a very tight window of what they can be, and it feels like from from about sixty six wins to about seventy four wins, and that's kind of it. 
Last year, they their, have some... their over-under mark was 68 and a half, and they finished with 68. Uh, All of go. you went over. They have some interesting like contract extensions. You know, We're talking about Arenado, and they, they got rid of him, and they didn't trade Story, but they signed Bryant. Uh, Ryan McMahon is locked up through uh, 27, although he has a conditional opt-out after both 25 and 26. Uh, Freeland's locked up. Um, Senzatella is locked up. Like They have some pieces that are going to be there. Um, I just don't know if it's enough to to make a splash. And if you're a Rockies fan, I mean, you you had some really good players on your team, and, and it didn't amount to uh, what they hoped it would amount to. And now you're kind of just stuck here middling around. And I don't even know if middling is the right word. I mean, they're 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 looking up at a lot of teams. And if the war projections hold true, they're projected to be the worst team in the National League. Hey now, and I'm usually the optimistic guy here. Here's a here's a here's a something I don't um, uh, agree with. Their season ends or begins uh, on Wednesday the fifth. Their first two series against the Padres and the Dodgers. Mm. Either you smack them in the face and they don't see you coming right away on the road, beat them. You haven't even played at home yet, yeah. So you're not going to have the cores effect. Where you know you're seeing the ball in in Colorado, and then you go on the road. You open up on the road. That's great for them. It's normal baseball. And then you host the Nationals. They yep. stink. Yep. You're ten and zero. We're hot. And you're great. And then you just lose the rest of the way. So that's something I don't agree with. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm rooting for. I'm rooting for Grichik because he's friendly and I like him. But he is kind of, and like shit. Rockies play the Yankees. That fuck. Mm. Yeah, he's going to get you guys for sure. When's that happening? Get ready. Tell me they come here. No. Yanks go to Colorado. Hello. July. Ooh, right after the All-Star break. That's right. That's right. Is that how they open up? Yeah. That's cool. Uh, I don't know. Top half of the lineup, give me something. Top of the rotation, give me something. I'd I'd love to go look at trades, but they don't like make smart business decisions. Right. So they won't trade a guy and get value out of him if they think they can lose him for nothing instead. They've never known how to properly use that scale. Yeah. Get Chris something Bryant, for this? Yeah. Well, they don't like to do that. No. They're the giveaway. They're a giving team. I think they say the cost of the phone calls and the conversations isn't worth mm what we'd get get back in good players. Chris was hurt a lot last year when he did play. Like he was decently productive, especially in July. He had a one daughter before, you know, not playing anymore after that. So, I mean, look, this guy's a baller. He's going to come out. I'm sure he's going to have a bounce back year as long as he stays healthy. So that's going to help everybody around him. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I really am trying to find some optimism here because we, we want each fan base to go into the year thinking that some good things have a chance to happen. But, I mean, the offense could be okay. The starting pitching could be okay. But it's just I, I just don't see it being enough to, to make waves. And then where are you at? Like, what's the window here? What are we doing? I, I feel like I, I, Rockies fans probably share my sentiment here and, and like, what are we doing? Like what? What are we doing with our, our our ownership, our front office? We've seen we've seen he made some bizarre moves over the last couple of years, and doesn't instill a lot of faith in me in that organization. Uh, but I hope they come out and prove me wrong. Hope they continue to play well at home. Hope they figure some stuff out um, on the road. We had talked about this, you know, many times talking baseball. We had Trevor Story on when he was kind of like possibly going to be traded. It didn't end up getting traded, but he told us about you know what it what it felt like to be a, a player in Colorado, how you at home, like the ball, breaking balls just don't break as much. You go on the road and it's an adjustment period. So we had offered up some and things we think they could do, but I don't know. I'm struggling here, guys. I got I'm a, I got a storyline I want to see play out. You you want to hear my storyline I want to see play out? I'm excited for it. Yes. Nelson Lamette. I yes. want they tr he got traded to the Brewers in that in the hater deal I believe because they needed a clear space the Brewers flipped him to the Padres uh, not the Padres uh, to the 
Rockies, he was in their bullpen at the end of last year. Actually had some good outings. And then I think at the end had one really bad zero innings pitch, three earned runs that kind of tanks his numbers with them. They used him as like the seventh hole guy and all that. This guy, coming back from injury a lot, has one of the best sliders in baseball when healthy and right. Like, I mean, the numbers against his slider are nuts. The whiff rate's crazy. He is a free agent after this year. Have him pitch himself into a trade and be, you know, go to a team and be uh, a playoff slider bullpen guy. I think that could be fun. Or he could get hurt or he could not be great. But he has a slider that could get him moved at the deadline if you strike. His baseball him. reference picture is in a Brewer's hat right now, which is funny. Pitch himself into an extension like Daniel Bard did. Don't do. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Don't do that, Jake. I'm sorry. Spin it for us, Poppy. Spin it for us. Come on. What mm. you got? What's the over under here? 70. 68 and a half. 68 and a half. They're running it back. I mean, if our coastal bias theory. I have a question for you, Jake. Kicks in by one game. Do you think more teams got better than them in the National League? In the National League alone? More teams? What does that mean? More teams from last year. Do you think that teams that were below them last year took a step up in the National League? Like our our audience don't, but that's they kind of. Well, the the National League has more has more beast teams, and I think what comes with that is more weak teams. So I think it's a little bit of a pairing. Yeah. Because right now, last year, the only National League teams that were worse than them were the Pirates, the Reds, and the Nationals. Covered them. Do you think any of them bumped up? I'm on the I'm on the Pirates train. Okay. Um, uh, none of those teams are going to be over 500. My Cubs have gotten better in the. But they're going to play more teams that are over 500 they're now. Facing less Dodgers, Padres. But they're now facing all the AL East teams. Once they were, four of them were over 500 last year. They're facing the AL West, which has good teams. They were horrible against teams over 500 last year, these Rockies. We're going to have some teams visiting course. They were 35 and 63. 63 losses to teams over 500 last year. And I think they're playing more teams that are over 500 this year than last year. Bryant. Um, This is a grim TPP. I'm going over. How about that? I I mean, I think it's just over. I think we're looking at 69 or 70, but I think with their home field advantage, I think give me a couple less uh, Dodgers Padres games and hopefully Chris Bryant plays. I think you can win one or two more games. And Gritchick is going to get to face the Yankees. So that's two more wins. Yankees coming off the all-star break, not head, not on their shoulders yet. Um, I'll take the over. Wow. I don't know. Wow, that's classic, Trev. classic sports betting from you guys right there. When all hope seems lost, go the other way. I don't consider don't them. Be uh, they're not in the central, so. On this side. I, I got to go under, guys. I just don't see anything that's going to um, make them call. improve. I don't know. I guess Bryant nice. being back will help them. I agree with you. A little bit. I, like I, I'm, I'm going to take the under here. Okay. We're into your bet. One more storyline to watch with them. Chris Bryant hasn't homered at Coors yet. Wow. Good. All five of his homers last year were on the road. I mean, you get okay. one of those. Yeah. Shoot, he crushes lefties. Shoot. And the Dodgers have, who has a bunch of lefties coming up against them? Does the Dodgers have a bunch of lefties? Kershaw, Kershaw Urias. Urias. Maybe that was last year. Yeah, they had Anderson. I'm trying to find Heaney something, people. Year. Well, versus left-handed winger versus the Rockies versus left-handed pitching last year. If that's what you're interested in right now, if that's what you're begging to find out, they were 29 and 32. Bonk. They weren't really good at anything last okay. year, according to like trying to find a winning record. They got the best sideline reporter in the game, and they've got a beautiful stadium. They're 41 and 40 at home. So there you go. I'd love to see Cole Tucker really get a shot in spring training. I know he's our friend. I know I've been working with him. Uh, P.J. Pilateri, uh, Yankees fans will remember him a little bit in the minor leagues as a catcher. Uh, he's the hitting coach there, so hopefully he can uh, get Cole Tuck on he's that team f- for us because then he's I might flip it. 
I might flip my over under if Kotuk makes the roster. Okay. Fair. That's not bias. Okay, I like that little asterisk there. If mm. Kotuk makes the opening day roster, Trevor Plouffe's pick flips to the Not over. biased. Not at biased all. at all. Mm-mm. Zero bias there. I'm taking the over, I think. Sorry to Jake Bird. I like you. I, have, I really don't know anything about you. I People like are saying you. birds are not even real anyway. Oh, my so God. Dinosaurs went into birds. Oh, my God, weird. dude. Don't Google Jake Bird. He was a serial killer <laughs> in Tacoma. Probably a different Executed. one. Axe, an axe murderer. 11 murders. Jake Bird. Famous guy. Damn. Go, go Rocks. Go Rocks. Go rock. The Tacoma Axe Killer. It's our year. 70, baby. I like the uniforms. How about that? Okay. For the baseball player, see Jake Bird baseball. <laughs> I like them incorporate. Need more purple. Jacob Timothy Bird. I have Timothy a freaking Bird. year, Charlie Black. And I want to see Jake, Jacob Timothy? 